What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the A Show with the Kings of Pro Wrestling Podcasts. I am Justin. A little under the weather today, unfortunately, but I'm still here. Hey, with, Tis with the my season. Guy. Bro, it, it's it's rough. This is my second time being sick in three weeks, and um, I just don't know what it's like to be normal anymore. I, I just want to. I just, I just want to into the pain. That's all. This is a bad sick season. Like, I feel like a lot of people, you at least know at least two, three people who are sick right now. Like, you might. So, luckily for me, I don't leave the house. So, um, <laughs> I haven't got anything yet, God willing. But, man, I'm, I'm praying for you. And, you know, because it takes it out of the holiday spirit. Are you in the holiday spirit at all? I wasn't. Um, so, last weekend, I, I asked my wife to... Um, I asked my wife to like, let's get some garland. Let's get some tinsel so that we can, um, we can like, start like, like make the house more festive. Cause we put the tree up and I was looking around and I was like, it's not festive enough. We don't have like stocking. So I wouldn't spend like $150 on extra, <laughs> extra decoration uh, this weekend. Um, can you put the little cash thing? Because that's what everyone's going, that's what's going on in everyone's head. <laughs> That's nothing. We just moved, bro. We just moved. <laughs> like we had no like decorations for. So like I had to like get some more, and now I'm like, you know, I, I just wanted to feel more festive. I'm feeling it a little bit more now. I think when I when I'm not sick anymore, and when I'm finally off work, this is our like my last week at work. So like I'm finally gonna feel like okay, let's let's celebrate this thing. No, absolutely. I have I don't feel crap. So it is what it is. Um, <laughs> I just don't, I don't know. Maybe I have to go to the Macy's in Herald Square. Maybe I'll go do that. Um, so let's talk about this week and everything going on this week. Um, a show wise, shout out to everybody who's listening. Shout out to everyone who is tuned into the a show over the past number of days. Damn. Did I close the window with the thing? Uh, let's see. All right. No, I haven't. Awesome. So Two things, two big announcements this week, ladies and gentlemen. First announcement is the A-list top 20 of 2022 is officially ongoing on YouTube. By the time you hear this, if you're on public, episode three is going to be out. If you're listening to this on Patreon, we got the two first episodes are out. But we're premiering them. They're dropping every day, well, at least until Thursday. Um, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. 6 a.m. <laughs> Pacific. So if you're early bird, you can catch it. If you're not, you can catch it. But they're all up on YouTube. Um, and you can listen to the entire A Show crew is there. We got everybody, even Mark. Mark is not even like really officially, but he kind of is. I still um, don't know. I still don't know how that happened. It's just, you know, he's a he's he's a great guy. Everyone remembers 205 in live. Um, 205 in park. <laughs> Whatever you guys think. <laughs> whatever you guys called it when i wasn't there um so that is on youtube so make sure you guys subscribe to our youtube find our youtube the a show on rnc radio on youtube right there you'll also see shout out to the war report last week interview with apollo make sure you check it out we have clips on our youtube there you can also go to the episode to hear the full thing me and Quan sat down with apollo cruz right before his nxt championship match at deadline which we'll talk about later little bit on the show um so make sure you guys go check it out there and now the most important thing what you guys came for i don't want to bury the lead actually we got two leads and i don't want to bury any of them much longer to be honest with you (laughs) um giveaway yes we have a giveaway on our patreon shout out to those we work very very hard and somehow finessing the game to get second place (laughs) on that (laughs) black pod connect holiday giveaway um so we're giving away a replica championship belt. We had people essentially. Now I want to let's see. Is it possible that I could FaceTime you right now, Justin? Uh, yeah, it is. Okay, all right. Let's see. Let me see if I can do this right now. I just want there to be a witness. I don't want to say anyone that I rigged it or something along those lines. Um, so I'm gonna FaceTime Justin right now. First of all, I'm gonna lower my volume because he. Is be right clear, I'm all for the rig. All right, so. <laughs> I'm, no i'm not against i'm, I'm against rig i'm anti-rigging okay listen we just first time we ever facetime while we're recording the show i feel like we should do this more often um so we're gonna go through it we're gonna randomly pick a number i got the number generator website right here number between one and 268 the winner who is closest without going over will get the championship belt okay. i need you to say the number when you see it justin 
Okay. All right. Okay. 173. 173. Okay. So let me go back to my list. I'm going to hang up with you, Justin, right now. Um, Let me go back to my list and see who is going to get this. Once I'm able to pull it up. 173, 173 closes without going over. Actually, there's someone who got it exactly what it is. Oh, my gosh. Terrence Havercombe. Come on, you about to wow. have her come home with a championship. <laughs> you so know cool. what I'm saying? Hey, like right on the you dot? Right on the dot, bro. 173, Shut right on the dot. Wow. Absolutely. 173, shout out to you. You're going home with a replica championship. I'm going to gonna DM you on Patreon. We're going to talk about this. We're getting you a championship. Wow. I, one I'm, of them, I'm, bro. I mean, all like, that's that's just so random that somebody gets it like on the dot like that. Like what? Yeah, like, like two hundred sixty-eight numbers. Like what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> so crazy. But you can expect more of this stuff. I mean, next year. I mean, we're already a month away from Royal Rumble pool, so that's got to come up. So uh, more already, yeah, just- yeah. We're <laughs> we do a lot of things, man. Who would we say we're very we're very gracious with the stuff that we have, with our time and the people that we have. So shout out to Terrence Abercrom. You're going home with a replica championship at some point. I'm going to contact you right after this show. But don't want to bury the next lead much longer because we have a very big guest. We sat down with none other than the man who will be going up against Gunther in the biggest rematch of the year. Arguably. Um, Biggest rematch of the year. Ricochet. We sat mm-hmm. down with Ricochet, exclusive interview with Ricochet. We pick his brain. We go through all the things that you guys want to hear about. You guys want to hear about the matches with Gunther and how hard his chops are actually. You want to hear about how the Carmelo Hayes match came to be. We got that down. Maybe you just want to hear about how this guy, you know, <laughs> apparently a very benevolent spender. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> how he does not spend his money. Uh, yeah. Because if I worked in WWE, <laughs> trust me. Bro, I'd have you a see how Montez is. I have a jet ski. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but very modest spender. We got an interview with Ricochet up next on the A Show. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, to the A Show. And we are here. We have a very special guest on the show. Because this man, we just get... Wow. See, they wait until... That, that's near that's to- the police... They turn it up the <laughs> sirens for this shit. They turn it they up. Turn it up. <laughs> they, everyone is hype. Listen, we just gave away a championship for the holidays, but this man earned his championship shot. And he's getting it this Friday on SmackDown, live from Chicago. You have any good Chicago memories? Chicago's a big wrestling city. Um uh it's funny enough when Dragon Gate USA started back in the day, what 2000. I don't even remember back in the day when Dragon Gate USA started. Uh, we did Chicago a lot, and I had a lot of good memories. I did the so I did the double moonsault in Philadelphia at the the ECW arena, but then I think like my next Dragon Gate USA dates, I guess we had. Mm-hmm. I think in Chicago it was like me and Shima versus uh, Speed Muscle, Doi and Yoshino. Wow. And I think I did the the double moonsault there on to Doi. But then also, I mean, I, IW Mid South used to run Chicago a lot, mm-hmm. uh, Joliet area. Uh, I used to go to Chicago a lot for this lucha company called Galley. Ooh, oh yeah, like, okay. So I was actually, I mean, I wrestled in Chicago a lot. Hey yeah. man, well listen, you coming back to the city back. this Friday, SmackDown World Cup winner yourself, and you're finally coming back for your rematch against. Yeah, we say, we no, because say I'm, I'm leading. I'm leading up to it. Okay, it's Ricochet. <laughs> <laughs> you blew all the air out the sails. <laughs> I, I, was, I feel like we just went right into it. like listen, man, like all, all like not for nothing. If you guys listen to the show for over 200 episodes, y'all know that me and Mills we love Ricochet like. He's one of my favorites. I remember I, would, I, I, we do, we do predictions on the show. When we went against Brock. I was like, "Oh, Ricochet's winning," and and he was just like, "Wait," what? I was like, "No, just because, just because it's Ricochet, bro. He's he's one of my That's favorite right. superstars in the world." So thank you for being on the show. No, thank you guys. This is great. 
Of course, man. One of the best in the world, to be honest with you. Now, you here, you're finally getting your chance at the Intercontinental Championship. Yes. A, a rematch has been long time in the making. Like this, is, Did you ever think it would come back around this way, especially considering how everything has gone over the last number of months? Um, I mean, I knew the opportunity would come back around soon. I mean, obviously, like I figured, you know, usually the champion loses, they get the rematch, whatever. I don't get the luxury yet, you know, so I got to just another thing that Ricochet has to do, another process that Ricochet has to do to get, you know, the opportunities, you know, but that's OK, because I've never been one to back down from a challenge or back down from hard work or whatever it is to get the tour I need to get. So I always knew it would eventually happen again. So um, that I know is going to be in the form of a World Cup when I mean, obviously, I no one could. But as soon as obviously when as soon as the tournament was announced and as soon as the competitors and the participants were announced and I knew I was in it like I knew like I knew I had a shot I knew I could everybody on there I had an, a game plan I knew that you know everybody you're in there you, you you always want to be the best but I just knew as soon as it was announced I was like this is my chance to finally you know get back to that intercontinental championship absolutely Man. and I mean just from the past couple of months since you had the title then you lost the title. One thing I've noticed like a lot is your confidence went up and you could, you kind of sort of saw moments and glimpses of it around like many a time you were kind of like yeah. talking more, you were talking, you were talking more trash after that. You just kind of went, went completely in. Like what could you attribute your change in attitude to? I mean, I guess it's just a, a, a mental state, you know, that, it's not even really a change of attitude as much as it's just, I don't know, it's like build your confidence up, you know, like when you play in tech and it's like, let me get my confidence up real quick with a couple of W's under me, you know, and then once that starts, once that starts rolling, you just kind of, you know, you kind of get it back, you know, so it's just one of those things. I think it's just getting your confidence back, the confidence booster of just, you know, trying to go back to where I remember what I used to be, what, 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 what put the thread in when people hear the name Ricochet, it's going to be like, oh, crap, that's who I got to go with now. Like, oh, cool, I get this guy, you know. So I think it's just getting my confidence back, getting a couple string of victories, you know, showing everybody what I can do and even just speaking, showing everybody that I can talk to talk, much less walk to walk. So I think it's just confidence is coming back, starting to get that back up and we're going from there. Yeah, because, I mean, you mentioned how you used to be. Like, I remember seeing you back in PWG and yeah. you were like one of the cockiest dudes out yeah. there you know what i'm saying like it it, it was, was the good, you know what i'm saying yeah exactly like you you were you were that dude and you kind of put that out there so as a fan of yours for i mean going on more than five ten years at this point like i'm like yo he's he's finally kind of getting that swagger back and, and i'm glad to see that even on tv like it, it's yeah. just like yo like ricochet is really talking that. And, and like i'll tell meals like he's kind of hey he, he, he's not being timid no more like i, I like this new look that's right. That's what you know. That's the, that's what it is. It's just, yeah. No more timidness. No more. You know what I mean? Like putting my not putting myself down, but like right. I, I, there's a phrase I'm looking for, but it's you know. I, I feel like I feel like it was a sense of like. I feel like it was like politeness more than like you were just like okay yeah, here's yeah. Where, where I fit in and I, I know where that is, but now it kind of seems like you're more seizing the moment like. The, yeah. I got to get mine too. Is I Absolutely. feel like that's that's what Absolutely. the attitude is. Like I got to get mine too. At the end of the day, um, Absolutely. You, know, you want to come in and you know, like you want to be respectful and you want to you don't want to you know overdo it, over you know exaggerate or whatever it is you want to do. So it's like you want to come in and be respectful, but like now it's like now, like you said, I got to get mine now. Now it's about me. Yeah, man. Yeah. Listen, man. That first match you had with Gunter going through talk about that experience because like how exactly all right like how exactly hard are these chops like really <laughs> oh, like gosh. on a scale like what's the hardest chop you've ever received and is it going through oh, and like where does it thing on the scale to be honest with you uh one of the hardest ones i've ever was the finn Balor's chop it was in the indies uh <laughs> revolution pro back in the day he chopped me so hard i said oh my goodness <laughs> I just sat there for a second and was like, oh, my God. <laughs> but, um, no, his is up there. Like, his, like, you don't even get the chance to, like, register it. It's like, once he hits, as soon as you just, as soon as he hits, you're just on the mat, you feel like. Yeah. You know, so it's like, 
then afterwards it starts to hurt. You know what I mean? Like the initial yeah. one doesn't really hurt because you're as soon as he hits you, you're on the mat, and then you get up, and you're like, ah. Then it starts to hit. But no, dude, obviously he's a he's a beast, obviously. I mean, and not only just him himself being a beast, but he has Imperium with him. And so no telling what those are guys are gonna do. Um, I feel like as dominant as Gunther is, a lot of his success is because of the people he has around him. And obviously, like other than last week when the new day came to help your boy out, like I don't really have the people around me like that. It's usually just me going out there by myself, which is something that I always, you know, I always account for that. I always take that in. And I always understand that. It's is it something you prefer? I'm going to be three on one, really. Right. Is it something you uh, prefer? No, I always have to prefer one on one because one on one, I'm usually going to win every single time. Right. <laughs> one on one, it doesn't matter who you, I'm in there with. One on one, I'm going to most likely place my money on me. Right. But I mean, obviously, when you go in there three on one, I feel like I do have the skills, I do have the intelligence, I do have the knowledge of factoring that in when I go into these matches. I, you know, I got lucky with Legato del Fantasma because the referee <laughs> threw him out anyway. Well, well, so, yeah. you know what I mean? So, I do always have to factor those guys in no matter really what. So, that's something that I feel like. I have an advantage, not an advantage really, but I, I do take that into account and I do understand that those guys are out there and can at any time and will get involved. So you you kind of always been like a lone wolf. And we're talking about so we're talking about teams and we're talking about all these people with if you had your choice, if you were to be like, I need to pick two or three people to roll with me, to rock with me, to be in my entourage, who are you picking to, to watch your back? I mean, if I get to pick, it's going to be like Bobby Lashley or Brock Lesnar. Yeah. <laughs> if I get to pick, <laughs> this is going to be my, my back. What's up? <laughs> no, What's their um, reason? What's their reason? Yeah, What's their for reason? real. Um, I mean, there's so many guys out there that are just awesome. That I mean, it's really, especially nowadays, you could pick anybody from the roster. But if I had to pick, I mean, obviously, I feel like myself and Mr. Mastidio – would yeah. be a great team. I think obviously he I got a lot I could learn from him as well. I right. think just the two of us would be a dynamic duo that's basically unstoppable. Right. Um I think there there is something to um before we were doing a little bit like me and Cedric had a little bit of steam going. Right. I think there's a good team element there. Right. Um Obviously, like if if I need some help and I need a Braun Strowman to come out there, it's not it's not always bad to have a Braun Strowman, you know, watching your back. You know what I mean? Yeah. Hey man, had to earn power it. game going. The power you got to earn your. He had to have, you know, respect for you, especially how you handle that kind of match because winning that you Absolutely. you haven't had a tough road in the SmackDown World Cup tournament. Easy, I mean, easy road rather. You haven't had an easy road at all. And going up against Braun Strowman is like, that's a task. And to be able yeah. to win the way you win, that's a task. Like, he has yeah. to at least. I mean, people talk about No, he things. absolutely. Uh, I mean, even after, he, during the match, he said it. I don't know if you guys could see what he was saying, but during the match and even after, he was like, he was like, man, he goes, I don't even blame you for what you did. A win's a win. You got to win no matter what. He goes, I blame those guys, really. He was like, I, you know, it's all on you. Good for you. He goes, I would have done the same thing if you were distracted. He's like, so he's like, yeah. I can't even fault you for that. And I was like, absolutely. You know what I mean? So he was like, you flippy guys are all right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> One of those. I mean, it like, would have oh been the same God. outcome either way, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was, no, that, go ahead. And, and I mean, are, are, are you going to miss? I, I, I was going to go to, to somebody that I felt as though was not going to be in, in Ricochet's entourage, but. Uh, so oh, a, one, my friend? A, a man uh, who resides down in the PC right now. Uh, he goes by the name of, I mean, he says he doesn't miss, but uh, Carmelo Hayes. You guys had a crazy yeah, match. My biggest fan. Look at that. He's my biggest <laughs> fan. He said he talk all this. He's my biggest fan. <laughs> uh, how did that match come about? Was that something that you had been waiting to do with him, or was it just something where it was just like it just came together organically like that? Um, it was, I mean, obviously, I think, obviously, that was a match that I knew people would want to see. Obviously, really, any match that I'm in, people are going to want to see. But that was going to be a marquee <laughs> match, really. Um, 
And I knew that. And that's why I walked in, you know, Melo talking. He wasn't on the show. Uh, he wasn't on the Worlds Collide. He was talking about it. So, you know, I decided to come down. And like I told everybody, it's like, I'm going to give Melo a match. Everybody's going to remember. He's talking about all these matches that he had, all these title defenses, all this stuff. I was like, nobody remember none of them. So, like, let me do you a favor. Come down and give you a match that people are at least going to remember. And then while I'm at it, I'll take the title off of you. But obviously, again, circumstantial. There's so many people that I have to take into account. Watch out for Mello, But there's trick and there's so much other stuff that I have to, you know what I mean? So... I give it to him, like, again, just like with Braun Strowman, like, I can't fault you for a victory. Like, a win is a win. And, like, he got the victory. Like, he he he, he used all of his his influence. All the elements. His elements that he has at his hand, you know, to win. And you can't, you can't fault the guy for that. But, yeah, I mean, that match, I was excited for that match when, 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 I, when I found out about it, when I knew about that match, man. That match was something that, again, I just knew people were going to want to see and especially it's always cool to go back down to NXT. That's where I really, you know. Yeah, that's what I want to talk about, too, because they you got the hero's welcome when you came back, man. They were <laughs> so cold, you, so cold pop when he came out. <laughs> it was great. Yeah, it was great. Like how yeah, also I think not even just it was me, but like. Obviously, like the fans love to see me back, but I think. They knew what they were going to get as well, you know what I mean? Like. They knew, oh, oh, Ricochet's back. Then they're like, oh wait, he's gonna, is he gonna wrestle Melo? Like, and then like when you like, okay, yeah, this is great. You know what I mean? So it's like all those factors had to had to do with it. So it's, it was it was awesome. It was really cool. And being down there with Shawn Michaels and just get to talk to him again, and learn from him again, and pick his brain again, like that's always gonna be welcome for me. You know. Did you notice any like quick differences when you were down there from when you were down there? Because like I remember, I was there live for I guess it would be your final NXT match. It was no. was the NXT and Takeover New York was your final one. Yeah, the tag match. Yeah, I remember because <laughs> I remember that classic. for sure. It was like classic, absolutely. Ten out of ten, we'll do it again. Yeah. Um, has anything you noticed anything kind of change and just kind of like how it's like operating down there or like I mean the whole just... thing is different down there now because of how they do it now really like it's we were doing it from uh full cell they do everything straight out of the performance center and they film it at the performance so everything as far as operations and stuff is like not that it's crazy different but they do do things much differently than when I was there. But as far as like, and I think you can see it from the the deadline that just happened, the show deadline that just happened, like the, that passion is still there. Everybody still want to go out there and everybody wants to have like a great match. And everyone wants to go out there and show that NXT is still like on the come up. NXT is still, you know, a hot show and NXT is still going to give y'all good quality entertainment, wrestling, whatever it is that you're looking for. NXT still has that. So that really hasn't changed. But as far as like seeing how it goes and how it operates and where they practice and everything, all that is kind of different down there because of how they have now changed up how they do their television production and stuff. Absolutely. Like you were friends with Apollo. We just had that NXT title match yeah. last weekend. How did you feel about that? How did you feel about that for him? At least we talked to him last week, but how did you feel about that for him? Oh, no, that's great. Anything when Apollo can get the spotlight I'm for, because I think he's just a superstar and I think, the man looks like a superstar and he, he 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 performs like a superstar and so like anytime that he can get that opportunity is great um and then him and braun tore it up. they tore it up especially you know you're going on right after the crazy multi-man multiple pin <laughs> match you know you're going on right after that so you kind of have to deliver you know what i mean and they went out there and they got this is awesome chance like they got like nxt chance so, like once you go out there after that and you can still perform and you can still like deliver a match that's going to get the fans back into it. Like that's a victory in itself. But at the end of the day, you know, Braun came up with the title, but I, I don't think this is going to stop Apollo. I still think he has a lot going on down there that he's going to, he's going to really put a stamp on his name, put a stamp down there. Amen. And also like NXT America, North American championship. That's it. You've had that. Yeah. The champion right now, Wesley, man, he's a, yeah. he's a good guy, man. Like, is that's there a chance homie. maybe a, Another dream match coming down the pipeline. How do you feel about his development and kind of how that's gone? Absolutely, man. I've known him for years too. I mean, years. I used to, I used to drive to Chicago actually uh, in in a, a couple places, and he and I would wrestle. And uh, 
yeah, he's just been grinding for so long and he's always been so good and so charismatic and just connects to the people. And when he got to NXT, it just showed and shined through and it showed how positive and bright he was and stuff. And then not only that, when he gets into the ring, it's just hard to, it's hard to not be mesmerized by the stuff he does, right. even for me, you know, it's so cool to see him and stuff. So, but um, yeah, I, I knew he would be destined for greatness. I knew he was going to do something. And so seeing him with this uh, this title, seeing him with the North American Championship, is just it's like it's it's great. It's a good feeling. It's a good feeling to see. Absolutely. Um, let's see what else do we got here on the pipeline. Your you, your philosophy has changed, kind of like how you operate in the ring. I would say from especially from the Indies to now. Like, what do you attribute that to? Because it feels more like. It feels more now like you're picking your spots. Like every match isn't going necessarily 360 miles per hour, even though you probably could. I mean, I don't know. It's we're all getting old at this point. But <laughs> hey, Rick should get old. He get better, man. Come on now. Don't disrespect. Right. 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but like, what what's kind of your match philosophy when you're like actually like going through all these matches? Like for instance, like a match with you know Santos Escobar and like you know that's a big time match maybe you have to pull out a few more stops than you would originally um and put on that take it to the next level um or just a you could have a, a, just a standard match on smackdown or something like how does your philosophy kind of change because we i see a lot you know we see a lot of people on the indies they going through these things it feels like it's going so fast and they feel like spot after spot after spot after spot do you feel like this is kind of like evolution of your style or do you feel like it's just like, you know, reacting to the moment? I think it's a combination of style evolution, reacting in the moment of what's going on. And I'm like almost 35 years old. So it's like, it's a combination <laughs> of all of it. Uh, and you've been doing this for like I almost 20 years. At this when, point. I'm watching, when I'm watching like a, of someone post of something on Twitter, I'm watching it, whatever. I'm like, man, I wonder if people like remember. Like, I'm like 30, mid 30s, been doing it for 20 years. This is crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's when I look at like AJ Styles and Rey Mysterio, I'm like, man, these guys are like 40 something and just killing it. <laughs> what is the best? Yeah. It's crazy. So, I, but I think it's a combination of that. And I think obviously it's all situational. So, like, when you're in there with an Osprey or a uh, Amazing Red or uh, you know someone like that, it's gonna be I'm gonna have to react, do a lot of more reacting and dodging and stuff because they're coming quick. You know what I mean? Pause. But <laughs> <laughs> when you're in there with Drew or Baron Corbin or you know what I mean Gunther or Braun or something, it's like you have to again pick your moments. You gotta like I feel like Ricochet's a counter puncher. So like right. if you're in there with Floyd Mayweather, you're gonna be countering a lot quicker, or hopefully countering a lot quicker than when you're in there with, you know, Evander Holyfield or you know what I mean, George Foreman. So yeah. it's like this it's it's all situational, it is all kind of reacting to the moment, but also it's you know, you wanna lead them in, so you don't wanna you don't wanna start the match and just empty the gas tank right immediately right. you know when you're in there with i don't know when you're in there with bobby lashley you you, you want to keep your energy as long as you can because yeah, yeah, yeah. itself is a monster you know what i mean so i think it is it's 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 uh it's, it's a combination of a lot of things that go into it but at the end of the day it's all situational and i feel like ricochet is a reaction fighter he's a counter puncher he used my environment to my to me much like the santos thing like I try to use all the elements into the ring, the guardrail, the ropes, the mat, you know, everything that I can use to get a victory. That's, I, that's what I feel like Ricochet has done. Like, again, like I, I equate Ricochet to like Nightwing. You know what I mean? I feel like he's very mm -hmm. nice. He's, he's ele elementalistic. You know what I mean? He uses the elements, he uses everything around him. Plus he has a, a strategy going into almost every single thing. You know what I mean? Right. So it's, it's, as much as it is like a style change, it's really just an environment change. Right. So I'm just adapting to the new environment. Right. It's, a more, it's more physical here. Everyone is stronger, more physical here. So Ricochet's got to be more physical. And then 
when you got them on the ropes, when you can draw them in a little bit, then you can hit the, the ducks, the springboards, the dives, the, the cross bodies, the, you know, yeah. then you bring that aspect into it to, you know, really take them over to that next level. That's how really kind of I go about it. And really I think of like, when I'm in there, I think, what would Jackie Chan do? Right. That's what, that's what I quite like to say, like, what would, what would Jackie Chan do? He would, you know, right here, he would fight these guys, but then when it gets too much, he's going to run. Yeah. Let me run for a second and, get, and then fight again. You know what I mean? So it's, I literally think like, what would Jackie Chan do? <laughs> or, I mean, what, no would, what would Rick do? <laughs> uh, and, and speaking of Jackie Chan, I know he got a lot of strategies, but there's there's one guy, and I, and I mean, you've wrestled everyone on SmackDown at this point, just about. There's one yeah. guy that, that we haven't seen you face, and it's going to take all the strategy, all the physicality, and I'm sorry. Hey, it's, gonna, it's probably going to take YouTube. I checked it on YouTube. I was like, has this match happened? Like, this has it happened or not? It hasn't happened yet. And again, I'm sorry, you might have to go, you might have to go higher your 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 uh your own stable for this one, but Roman Reigns is a match that, that we haven't seen. Is that something that you feel as though is like you know you really want to do? And like what would be your strategy for that? Like that that this is someone who's obviously at the top of their game, and that and that's someone that has elevated so many people. What like what do you feel like you could bring to the table there? Um, it's funny because honestly, I don't know if Roman has ever faced someone like me. Right. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of good guys out there, but with the, with the skills I have, I don't know if he ever has, and I'm not saying that I'm just going to downright win or nothing, but I'm just saying, I don't know if he's ever faced someone like me, you know what I mean? But obviously that is a, a marquee match that I'm always willing to do, I think, you know, what I mean, I'm always willing to have. I, I'll have the match next week if I could. Um, <laughs> but at the moment, like, I am, I'm trying to build my my entire resume. I'm trying to get accolades. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get the ind- individual things and and to be whether that's universal champion, whether that's the WWE champion, or whether that's the undisputed WWE universal champion, whichever yeah, right. one you want to choose. That is something that obviously is in my radar. And that is why I'm here. That is the main reason why I am still here. And that's the reason why I, everybody wants to be in the WWE. That's everybody, everybody wants to be here because they all want to be that guy. So that is absolutely something that I see in my future. And Whenever Roman's down, if he if he ever wants to, if he ever feels the need, like I'm I'm here for it. I'm here for it. But at the moment, the lane that I'm in, our lanes is two different lanes right now. And until our lanes really cross, you know what I mean. I'm I'm cool with them doing their thing. They they doing their whole thing. You know what I mean? Because like right now, honestly, my like what I have in in mind, my outline would be to win back the Intercontinental Championship make that, you know, make that title reign mean the most I can make it mean, get the most out of it and really show everybody that I'm here with that. You know what I mean? But then also I want to be just for, you know, being a fan of the Hardy Boys and New Age Outlaws and Legion of Doom. Like I want to be tag team champion. I want to be tag team champion. I want to, I feel like there's a lot of guys out there who have my back, although we're not necessarily like a group or anything. I feel like there's a lot of guys out there who I feel like we would, we would really crush it. We would, we would make a great team. So that's something that I have in my sights. Um, there's a lot of things that I want to do, but it also, those one of those things include being the WWE undisputed universal champion or whatever falls underneath that <laughs> right. universal champion, whatever. But yeah, Roman Reigns, I mean, that's obviously something that's a marquee match. I think anybody would be excited to see that match. Um and one day, I, I, I feel like one day, if he continues to this reign and he continues to hold on to these titles, I feel like it will eventually happen. Absolutely. I feel like you're going to get to that spot where it's like everything, the planets are aligning and things are moving in your direction. I think you're waiting for the perfect storm of momentum and also opportunity, because I feel like one of the big things that you speak about is definitely opportunity. And I can always see it in the matches that you give. I remember during you know that period on Raw, uh, back in 2020 when you guys were doing the Thunderdome shows and you'd yeah. be on the show sporadically enough, but like when you would have like, for instance, a match against, you know, um, John Morrison 
And that falls kind of anywhere match where it's just like, you got to, it reminds you that, yeah, yo, this guy's really like one of the best in the world, to be honest with you. Like you really, yeah, and j- just to build, continue to build that momentum and keep it. I think the only thing so far, just as a viewer that's been standing in the way is like the consistency, because you've had these, again, like, yes, these moments, but they've all kind of been sporadic. And then they come and then you go, you win an Intercontinental yeah. Championship from Sami Zayn earlier this year. Then Gunther comes and then it's kind of over. Then you kind of have to build yourself back. So I think the perfect storm is kind of the best way to do it. Like, yeah, especially considering we're all praying you end in 2022 on a good ass note. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and going in 2023 and absolutely smash that. Um, absolutely. But before we get out of 2022, we got to do your, your, we got to find out. We've been doing on our YouTube, we've been going through our top 20 moments of 2022 oh, in wrestling. Wow. Now, we're not going to, you're not going to thank you with all the wrestling thing because trust me, a lot of things have happened in this industry over the past year. Um, <laughs> mm-hmm. However, we do want to, you know, talk about kind of your favorite things. We kind of end the year with like some of your favorite stuff for 2022. Um, yeah. We got a couple of things. What's your favorite purchase of 2022? My favorite purchase? <laughs> yes. The one thing you bought this year that you were like, yo, this is crazy. I needed this my entire life. <laughs> I. What did I purchase this year? Um, <laughs> I don't really buy a lot of stuff. Um, mm. I mean, most of the stuff that I, if you can... Is like this. Oh, there you go. There you go. That's the most of the stuff I buy. There you um, go. But I guess I would say, oh man, you gotta buy more <laughs> that, stuff, bro. I gotta it's buy so- stuff. I don't have stuff. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well, one thing, it. one thing I will I, say. I, 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 me and Sam, like we paid for our kids to fly with us to come to like um, the last pay-per-view Survivor Series. Uh, they yeah. flew out for the weekend and like they, we flew up to like uh, Massachusetts and stayed for the week in like an Airbnb. And then we went to a SmackDown and then we went to Survivor Series and stuff. So like, obviously that cost money for like Airbnb and tickets. Yeah. And <laughs> so that was probably my best thing is just getting us all together and be a family together. That's kind of cool for me. No, that's dope. That's dope. One one, th- one thing I do know that you're into. I'm good friends with Cornell. Yeah. And, and you guys sometimes go back and forth on the sneaker tip. And I'm yeah. a big sneaker myself. So what is your favorite sneaker purchase of the year? Actually, you even wear sneakers. You wear Jordan 1s uh, in yeah. your matches. I'm like, I know your feet be killing you. But what is your favorite sneaker purchase of 2022? Um, I got... I think it was 22. I got... I got... Probably one that sounds like you bought a lot of sneakers. <laughs> my no, I'm trying to because again, I don't, I don't really. I used to buy sneakers a lot, but yeah. again, recently I just don't purchase things. It's crazy. <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, what did I buy myself? Um, I my my favorite pair are the the. Um, I think they're the Chicago Reds. I forgot what they were called, but my red, my black, and my white ones. Just for one, red's my favorite color, but I just always yeah. liked that um, combination too. Even when I was a kid, we'd always get shoes, and I'd always, I'd always end up getting the the red, black, and white pair of shoes. And my right. mom was always like, "Sure, why don't you get a different pair of shoes, like a different color?" And I'm like, "Like these," but those. And then I have the uh, like the Jordan ones are like the baby blue and white ones i forgot again what they were called i forgot the model yeah. what they're called but those they come are, out so often they come out so they often that it's they're so yeah. smooth they're so sleek i really i mean i really enjoy those for sure absolutely i bought yeah. myself a my like in my garage i got a whole bunch of gym equipment that's probably a big i mean that's a huge purchase <laughs> i guess uh so i have like a my gym in my garage which i've never had in my life so that is yeah. something that like you said I, where's this been my whole life so Maybe I'll, 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 that's what I got my, myself is like a home gym, I guess you'd say. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and also in 2022, and what's your favorite? What was your favorite show? I don't know if you're you watching TV. I don't know, you know what I'm saying? What you're watching? What was your favorite show of 2022? 
wrestling or otherwise? I mean, my favorite show would probably would have had to have been the one that I was most interested in would be the My Hero Academia. Uh, but as far as like TV shows, me and Sam, we went back and we rewatched. We just did it on like a crazy whim. Just, oh, let's watch it. So we started rewatching Breaking Bad. Yes. But then like after like the first couple of episodes, we're like, oh, we were so into it. And like we literally just finished again the last episode like a couple of days ago. And I forgot, man, just how good that show is. I forgot how good it is. All the characters, now, Hank and Mike and Saul and right. all of them are just. That's what I was going to say. You got to get into Better Call Saul because that. I know. That's, show, that's another reason why we wanted to finish Breaking Bad because neither one of us has seen Better Call Saul. So now we're going to oh, start. Wow. You're in for a trip. You're in for I know. A that's what everybody says. That's what everybody says. Absolutely. That's how I feel about Bleach. <laughs> I was Bleach. Bleach was. Probably my second, as far as anime goes, my second most interested show that I was watching this year because I was trying to finish it because the Thousand Year Blood arc was coming out, which I, I'm like pretty deep into that now. So Bleach yeah. was another show that I got into this year that was, I really, I fell in love with it. That was awesome. Hey, sidebar, they doing the live action My Hero Academia. They just announced that yesterday. Did you see that? I did not see that. I don't know how hey, to <laughs> <laughs> I was about to ask you how you felt about that. I mean, obviously, I want to be like, yeah, it's great, but like, I'd have to see it. Like, you could do it, you could do it and make it good, but if they try to like, have you seen King Vader stuff? It, if they try to like Avatar it again, it's like, oh, <laughs> you know what I mean? have you seen like King Vader stuff, like King Vader's uh, YouTube channel and stuff no. like that? Oh, they do like hood my ear. I'll, 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 you got to send it to you because it's a, it's some pretty good stuff. Um, it sounds what, fun, but I just don't know how I feel about that. I'd have to see it. No, nah, I feel you. I feel you. Um, what's your favorite live event experience of 2022? My favorite. We went to me and Sam went to an Usher concert, and it was Ooh. awesome. It was. <laughs> we, were like, we were like on the floor. He was like right. It was awesome. It was so cool. <laughs> like and. Just to see, and like it was like a Wednesday night, and the place was like sold out. <laughs> you know what I mean? He was killing it in the fire and the in the in the stuff. It was so cool. But we also went to see like a Cirque du Soleil show. Um, I forgot which one it was, but that was pretty cool too. But the Usher concert was was crazy. It was cool. No, that's fire. I'm jealous. As, I'm jealous. As hell. Really I'm about to say something you gotta get to Vegas. You gotta get to Vegas, bro. I heard that show is, is crazy. He has, yeah, he had like a residency and we happened to get some tickets and it was just, it was awesome. It was so cool. Hey man, let's wrap this up. Favorite match of 2022. One including yourself, one that's not including yourself. Okay. Ooh. Um, I guess man, so a couple come to mind not including myself. The money in the bank Usos profits uh, free profits, profits match. Ooh, yeah. that's a good one. Fire. It was so good. It was so good. Um they also had obviously you know, Gunther, Gunther and Sheamus tore it up. That like they freaking tore it up. That was so good. Um Man, there's a couple. Those two pop into mind, really, as far as that goes. Those two really pop out there. And then including myself. See, that's the thing. Like, I give you, this year I gave you guys quality over quantity, I would say. <laughs> yeah. You didn't get a lot of them. You didn't get a lot of them. But <laughs> the ones that I was on were like, mm -hmm. Match of the what? year contenders. Yeah, of course. Um, you've had great matches. You you went up. Um, you had that great match with Baron Corbin. You've had that great match. I had some, I, Corbin's a good. He's a good dance partner, I guess you would say. Yeah. Right. Uh, Me and Morrison um, had some good. No, not Morrison. Not Morrison. Sorry. Uh, I mean, I guess if I had to pick my favorite one, it would have to either be me and Sammy when I won. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, just because of I won the Intercontinental Championship. Or why? Why'd you use the? Why use the Hurricane Rana in that match? Just because it's cool, or like <laughs> because you're not seeing it coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know. 
Um, fire. Or probably me and Melo. Obviously, that match was so good. I really enjoyed that say. match. Yeah. I mean, and with, with the, like the circumstances, like we were like the first match. We didn't have much time, and it was kind of like we didn't have much of a build, and we didn't have – you know, we had a lot of things not working against us, but we didn't have a lot of things that a lot of the other matches had to promote right. their match. And we didn't have 25, 30 minutes. We didn't have all this time. So I think what we did with what we had, I think, really shines. I think it really shows a lot as well. And I think it just yeah, it shows a lot. And then me and Escobar obviously was awesome. I really, really enjoyed me and Escobar. Um especially with the circumstances and everything like, and being told like, okay, the, you are two guys who, you know, you guys are asking for this spot. So here's a spot. This is what you can do with it. Wow. Especially on a night when you had Gunther versus Kofi and you had Sheamus versus Sammy and you had all these incredible matches. And like, so we wanted to go out there and show everybody that even with these matches, we could still put on a main event match that you guys are going to remember. So that one was cool. Um, yeah. There's a whole bunch of stuff, man. I, yeah, man. Yeah, it's a good year. It's, it's a, a good year. Like there's a lot of stuff going on. It is a great year. year. <laughs> um, that's all we got. I want to say thank you, Ricochet, for coming on the A Show this no week. Thank you. Listen, oh. man. Yeah, when thank Samantha, you guys for having me anytime. Yeah, when Samantha goes and new, I'm pretty sure you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna be <laughs> crazy. Oh new. yeah. <laughs> yeah, it might be a different and new. <laughs> you Absolutely. know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. But Can't we're wait. looking forward to it. We're rooting for you this Friday. Um, it's going down this Friday, SmackDown on Fox in Chicago. If, yep. that, uh, if that doesn't set the scene enough for you, um, I don't know what does. Thank you, Ricochet, for coming on the A Show. And we got more of the A Show coming up next. No problem. Thank you, guys. Peace. Peace. Right at the buzzer, man. Who but us? Who but us? Listen, end of the year. At the end of the year. <laughs> Two in one week. <laughs> Come on, man. Who did us? You know what I'm saying? You're I, blessed. I, I was initially really bummed that I wasn't gonna be able to talk to Apollo because I had some I had some previous engagements to do when when you know you guys had to do it. But this this was a this was a good, you know, uh this is a good follow up, I say I'd say. What getting to talk to one of my favorite you know, you know, I we, I was calling for Rick Shay to win all types of shit he wasn't gonna win back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> we had it planned out. But listen, to be honest with you, considering everything that's happening this week, we, me and you, we're on the same page. We feel like the the wind, the momentum, the wind is turning. It's all in his direction right now. Like oh, 100%. I really legit I legit think Ricochet is gonna come home with the Intercontinental Championship at the end of this week. Um and we'll talk, we've we'll already got. Why. We'll talk about why on No Holds yeah, Bar. We'll talk about why. Let's let's talk about why on No Holds Bar. Why not? Absolutely. <laughs> uh, so big big news off the top here. Um, literally just hit this morning. Wasn't expecting this. Uh, but Vince McMahon is back in the news. He's being hit with two more, uh, two more, two more cases, two more, two more uh, lawsuits from two women that uh, one of them we've heard about for quite some time. And another one is, is something that I, it was the first time I, of, of me hearing about it, but um, they're looking for, they look for their bread. Rita Chatterton Chatter is looking for her bread, bro. She's not playing. Listen, listen, man. She, the, I think the most egregious part, you know what? The most egregious part about all of this is that Vince McMahon is like, I got bad intel. Apparently, this is allegedly. He's like, I got bad intel. If I'd stayed, all of this would have blown over. <laughs> if Absolutely I hadn't not. left. Yeah, I was like, what are you talking about? But to me, this is the giant billionaire white guy in him yeah. that's kind of talking about the situation where you don't really, <sighs> you have no real true sense of, I guess, reality and kind of like how deep, how and this is actually is and how it's perceived to kind of like normal people but people there are rumors there is talking about that Vince McMahon is like listen he's just biding his time so he can come back and I'm like the best thing for your company right now is not to be featured in any major role or any role period be an old man Vince it's not that serious just chill out be yeah. old be a grandpa pay a lot in lawyers <laughs> lawsuits to be honest with you because i'm gonna keep it a buck i feel like they're gonna keep coming but hey um well there's we'll no see. 
there's no chance that he comes back because they're just not going to allow that. You know what I mean? The company's right. doing yeah. well without him. The board will not let it happen. This ain't succession, my niggas. This is <laughs> this is he's out. He's gone. There's no no. Uh uh-uh. uh. Absolutely not. I feel like Tony so, Khan um, would want him to come back. Tony Khan would be super excited if he came back, considering yeah, yeah, how but, everything's going. <laughs> uh, somebody to blame. Like you already saw it this morning. People are like, oh yeah, I know he wants to come back because I feel like he's already he's already uh booking stuff because it's not good. It's it's the, the, the book is not good. Like, come come on, relax. It's December, bro. It's December. Like, like it's go always terrible time. in December. In time with your family. Vince is a shitty motherfucker. All right, he's gonna he's gonna get his deal, but he's out of the company, so that's on him at this point. Like, I, I'm in Vince. Sit your ass down, man. Come on, man. Like, like let's just just get your, go, go sit down, bro. Like, ain't nobody ain't nobody trying to hear that shit, bro. Hey Talking man, was that the was that the raw GM that just, that just no? It's, it's it's us constantly updating our notes because news keeps coming in. <laughs> <laughs> sure, the fuck does. <laughs> but I mean, I I honestly we said everything we had to say about Vince uh, and something that's coming out very soon. So I don't know how much more I have to say about him other than like the company's doing well and him trying to continuously be the main character and have that main character energy is just not something that we need. Like, I just need him to step back. Like, Triple do H is doing do a think, good job. Right. Do you think there's any correlation? I believe the Vice documentary, is it tonight or? Yes, it's tonight. Oh, okay. Well, if you want us to review it. <laughs> just go if you, want, if you want us to watch it. Like, I'll, I'll yeah, watch yeah, it. if you want us to watch it, we'll watch it. Beta 5, you know what I'm saying? Um, Well, we will watch it for sure. Uh, but yeah, this is insane. But the the news gets even more insane as we continue to go. I know. <laughs> like, I feel like this week is kind of crazy. To be honest with you, I thought it was gonna be a slow December week. I'm ready to close Slack and everything, but here <laughs> we are. Um, Matt Riddle, there's a report that came out, not confirmed, of course, because this is wrestling. That uh, he reportedly was. <laughs> <laughs> he was reportedly taken off of TV last week in that big injury angle because he got popped for a second um for a second wellness violation and he got sent to rehab. I So there's no confirmation on this. Yeah. Um I, I, source... and, and it's hard to talk about it, right? Because no one said like unless it comes from the man's his mouth or a representative for WWE, which why don't they actually contact these people for this news? Um, I, I can't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't really know what, what angle to go at from, from that. Like, I, I feel, I feel bad for the guy. I mean, I know it's, hasn't been the easiest year maybe for him, but in the end it's, it's like, what, is it true? Like, I don't, I don't really know what to say. So the, the rumor is essentially like he originally, so from what I've heard, Usually, if this is the case, you've got popped more than once. So the rumor is that he got popped originally around SummerSlam, which is why the match didn't happen. Oh. So why that match didn't happen, and I think he was off. I don't. I think he was off television for some some time. I mean, or either way, it just didn't happen. Um, But I also feel like why go through the thing of doing the whole angle if you weren't going to give him the match? (laughs) I would have just beat him up backstage and call it a day, like what they did at Solo. Um, So people are saying that, and people are saying that this is the second one, and that this one is you either go to rehab or you get fired, a la Jeff Hardy. Um, So that is kind of what I'm hearing. Not necessarily, I don't have any sources. I'm literally hearing from the same sources as everybody else. But from the videos that I'm watching on YouTube, since now wrestling has invaded my algorithm. Um, shout out to our own channel, the A Show on RNC Radio, which you can follow oh, on YouTube. Subscribe, subscribe. Absolutely. Lots of great commentary. Um, so there's a lot of things. I'm I mean, the source is I need a better source. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. I need a I need another source because to be honest with you, this is the same source as Cody fizzled out. And I'm not saying that he's wrong, but I'm going to say that it ain't fizzle out. (laughs) So I don't know what to say to this. I would love to hear a lot more about what this is going on. But to me, 
this being like I feel like it's being positioned as like a punishment, but also he's also returning around the rumble, so he's gonna have a big like rumble angle. So I feel like I'm not sure the direction of where we're going with these this news right here. So I I don't either. I it, it gets it, this is out of the realm of like you know we talk about Jeff Hardy a lot where it's like you know he's a danger to himself and others and if Riddle is doing that he absolutely is a danger to himself and others if he's doing something that's not weed on that roster. Yes. You know what I mean? And he absolutely needs to be taken off the road. But if we have no confirmation of this and no one said anything about it, like they it, WWE picks and chooses when they want to announce this, don't they? They kind of yeah. Some, some people get announced for it, some people don't. But they also are are very forthright in telling people like this is what it was for. They did it for even Roman. He was like their top star at the time, you know. And, so and I don't feel like you have a eulogy for Matt Riddle on Raw <laughs> if he's going to be in rehab. That just seems like bad taste. Right. I don't know. I feel like because usually, so back in the day, back in our day, when wrestlers would get popped for drugs, <laughs> um, you were off TV and people moved on and they didn't really mention you in any sort of form. Maybe they go back as like, I remember, I have to pick Jeff Hardy in this situation, sorry. Jeff Hardy um, about to win it, actually does win it in a Continental Championship. I think he won it from Chris Jericho gets popped, loses it, has to lose it to Umaga, and is off TV for 60 days with no explanation. Like, I don't know. It's, to me, let's see how this goes. Let's see where... I, I want to hear from a few more sources before I, we give our opinions, but our overall um, thing opinion is drugs are bad and you shouldn't do them. Yeah, don't do them at all. And whatever Riddle's going through... This guy going through a divorce. People keep goddamn slugging on him online because because of them allegations. You know what I'm saying? Like I've always said, that man is a beast in the ring. Outside of it, he needs he needs Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Like he he needs some real. Too. <laughs> he hit the hashtag demons real early in his career. Very and much it, so. If the, People if this remember, is how it is with. Go ahead. You got to remember, Riddle has not been wrestling for ten years. That is one. That's one major factor that people don't re- don't realize. Right. He's only been wrestling for I, I want to say seven years, eight years, not even yeah. that long. He, he was picked up by WWE in his like third year. Yeah. So it's probably like six years or something. Like it's a, it's not a long time for sure. <sighs> so uh, we'll see him in six weeks. We'll see. Um, after this, Sasha Banks watch. Oh God. Ooh. I'm, let me, let me just say, I know I, I can tell from <laughs> how you didn't respond in the Discord that you're over this, by the way. <laughs> I don't I'm over it, bro. I'm I listen, every year we do this. Every single year. And let me just be completely honest. Like and, and let me just break this down before it's we one of our most it. profitable segments, to be honest with you. <laughs> Is it? Should be, we should be spot. I don't know. We sh- we should have it sponsored. Sasha Banks watch because we do it literally every year at this point. <laughs> it's every year at this point. We don't know. She's not going to say. There's so many conflicting. This one, I think, is the worst one. It's worse than the first one that she did, the first lengthy one that she did, where people keep saying, oh, well, she's now wrestling for another company or going to be at another company, but no one's ever said that she got fired. And guys, when she walked out, nobody fired her. So, like, what are we saying? Like, no one could confirm that she's out. So, what are we doing? What are y'all? So... The new reports are that Sasha Banks currently contract, um, she's still under contract to WWE, which you can see because she's still firmly on WWE.com. Um, but they're trying to work out negotiations for a potential on screen date. Unfortunately, there are some hang ups. People saying that, um, as Wrestling Observer Radio is reporting, that Banks and WWE were far apart on money during negotiations, which meant that a new deal hadn't been reached. As of right now, she's done with the WWE. It could change at she any just, moment. But that's she had just signed. She had just signed another deal. So how's she up? Yeah, the- that's. And it's like it's a. Fi- I'm assuming it's a five year deal because they're not giving away three year deals anymore unless you're like real big dog. When did she come like, back? She came back 2019. Yeah, and she had resigned. So I'm 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 guessing this is when the rights deal had come back. 
So they get, probably gave her five five years, at least. Had to and give they, her and five years. Your option comes in, kicks in at your fourth. So if they wanted to pick up the, her option, I'm, I'm assuming she had an option because they all do. <clears throat> and so, like, I'm assuming she had this an option. Is so speculation. It's a speculation. I'm assuming that she does. WWE is absolutely going to pick up that option. She's still under contract. So what are y'all saying that she's... I don't understand it. Like, I don't even think they understand it. People are running off the assumption that she does not work for the company anymore with no prior con- confirmation of that fact. Right, Mills? No, that's absolutely right. So... A, but oh. but they are saying, listen, they're saying she was pretty much... they Her and New Japan, so she's a, she's set to appear at New Japan Wrestle Kingdom 17 for what? I don't know, because they don't really... Like, they're starting to do women's matches now, right? <laughs> Like for a long time, there's no women featured on the show. So for her being like, oh, we're going to be here. um, She, the deal in terms of the deal wasn't negotiated with WWE is what is being reported. But here's the thing. Here's what I'm, here's what happening in my brain, right? Legal action, legal action, anyone? Are they going to, right? Yeah. There would have to be some sort of like you can't negotiate while you're still under contract to exactly. appear at a show. Like you can't negotiate, especially such outwardly negotiations and people blowing up your spot while crazy. Like you couldn't negotiate if you're still under contract. That would be a violation of a contract for sure. Like that's just contracts one hundred one. Um. But so in my brain, I'm like, all right. Because I don't think that she's actually gone. Look at what we're doing. Look at look at what we're doing right now. Listen to what we're doing. Right. If we gave this no attention anymore, we would be fine. Because I honestly don't care anymore. I, I don't care. I don't care. There's there's so many women on that roster. Listen, Sasha Banks is one of the greatest of all time. One of the greatest of all time. But I prefer to spend my time talking about the people who are actually there. I'm not. I, I haven't. I, I'm not going to keep with the nostalgia of of fucking Brooklyn for the rest of my life. That's just how I feel. No, you're you're, you're right. I think even with kind of, um, I think just in general, the allure is gone. Like, how is Sasha Banks drawing people to watch Wrestle Kingdom 17? Is Sasha Banks drawing people for any other wrestling event? that you know new japan might have like to be honest women's wrestling outside of wwe for a large part unless it's like stardom itself and apparently stardom she had such an exorbitant price they were like all right oh no and that's crazy <laughs> like that's you know stardom's like a a lower you know what i'm saying as far as budget you know them girls ain't getting paid like that so you want to yeah. go into a situation they know you'd be the most highest paid person in there you want hey respect me that's crazy. If true, that's crazy. <sighs> People respect. Listen, nobody, a- nobody really wants to fucking talk about and read between the lines about how crazy this whole situation has been. Like the more it's dragged on, the dumber it's looked. You know what I'm saying? At and this also, point, I, I feel like they need to just cut ties with each other. Cause I just, I don't care. Like, even if she shows up, like, I feel like I would be like, uh, whatever. <laughs> Honestly. So what about Naomi? <laughs> about her. That's, that's my new t-shirt. What about Naomi? What's going on with Naomi? How come I haven't heard any rumors about her in her new Japan? Uh, if Sasha Banks going, she got to be going, right? That's Is she? how it's been working lately. I don't know. That's how nobody, anybody, nobody calling for her? Anybody call, hitting up her line? I feel like I don't know. This is a, it's a very interesting circumstance. I yeah, the Atlanta, the the Atlanta Hawks game. game, watching Trey Young stink it up. <laughs> She's having the time of her life um, while being a question in terms of how she is with her contract. I'm interested to see how this shakes down. I'm ready to reach the end of whatever the hell this is so we can all kind of like now take a look back and see how it actually went. But It's way more people. Yeah. There are so many people that have wrestled more than she has in the past two years that deserve my conversation, that reserve my analysis. I'm just being real. Right. 
No. There's so many people that have wrestled more than she has in calendar years. In calendar years. Kawhi Leonard of the, of the game right now. That's her. No. Oh, I'm about to say, I thought you said Kawhi played more games than she had matches. I oh, was she's, like, Hell she's, the no. Kawhi, she, she's the Kawhi Leonard of this shit right now. Mm. Kyrie. Ooh, Kyrie is definitely a... But Kyrie be hooping. But Sasha, Kyrie, be hooping. She, Sasha be hooping. She be hooping. <laughs> she also be gone. <laughs> She be hooping, but she also be gone. There's so Amen. many Bailey. All y'all fucking want to talk about is Bailey win loss records. Bailey, this she on a damn show every week. If Bailey was in catering every week, like she was at one point on the main roster, that would be a problem. Nobody knows what they want. The same way they don't know what they fucking want with Sasha Banks. They want to come back and win all the titles. And get booked like Brock Lesnar. <laughs> They, there's a fire Ronda Rousey hashtag. She's been on every. She's been in every damn near almost every SmackDown this year. She was on SmackDown last week. She don't even gotta be. Nah, she really don't. But the, the, she that's the fact too. She don't gotta be on every. She, the, the, the people say, "Oh, the allure is gone." I'm like, because she probably because she's on the show so goddamn much. But she probably wants to do that. I, I'm tired of Sasha Banks watch, bro. If she shows up in New Japan, I'm not watching Wrestle Kingdom, bro. Hey, man. We can't retire Sasha Banks watch. It is an institution. <laughs> we have to know where she is when she's not wrestling for the majority of the year. So we I, hate it. I, I hate it. I hate it. God bless her. Mercedes Monet or Mercedes uh, Renato. God bless you. We'll know how all this turns out. If her contract indeed does expire at the end of the year, we'll know how this all turns out in a couple of weeks. So she's selling us right. CBD. She is selling us CBD, and you think that this person wants to wrestle? Somebody. Got she to had the CBD. gummy. She had. She had the gummy in her who who who. <laughs> all right. <laughs> she had the gummy in her mouth. She's selling a CBD. The fuck. Anyway, can move on. <laughs> big, rumor, big rumor happening came out uh, a couple of hours ago. Rumor that Gunther versus Brock Lesnar is in the cards for WrestleMania. That sounds like some shit I book. <laughs> I tell you, we talked about it in the Ricochet part earlier before the interview. I said it last week. We both said it last week. and said there's something different about this rematch. Gunther's already got another program with Braun Strowman. Ricochet's right there. You got a you got a Legato del Fantasma right there, who he beat, and, the, and they would be looking for revenge technically, like if he were to win the title. We got a new year in WWE. He's had the title for what seven months now. We don't need another long title reign. Bianca's been champion for like almost a year at this point too, right? Mm-hmm. Pull the trigger. Let's go. Let's do it. Yes. Have go through, let's go have Gunther lose and let's let's rock. Let's rock and roll. Hey, hey man. Gunther go have some put some size back on if he go up against Brock. <laughs> Might have to get chubby again. Cause the do way Brock, Brock was throwing him around. Do you think he wants to take one of them chops? Yeah, I would hope so. I think that kind of has to be part of the the story, right? Is Brock trying to watch out for the chop? No, nah, I don't think I think he's gonna try either. It's chop versus suplex. Chop City versus two Suplex City, like Brock Lesnar is a man who did a shooting star press, landed on his neck, and got up and wrestled again. <laughs> like <coughs> he coming back, unhinged. There's nothing this man won't do. He is unhinged, absolutely. So, so, so if we're to fantasy book this, will we think that they're going to set it up at Royal Rumble? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, yeah, I guess Brock is that kind of talent. I'm like, really? You could just throw this in anywhere. But Brock is the kind of guy where you need some setup, especially if we're going in L.A. It's interesting. He, This would be his first like mania match since like Dean. That's like pedestrian kind of 
not really the uh, big I, I'd blockbuster. Say, I'd, say Gunther, I'd say Gunther's a big deal. I, it's an exhibition match. Pedestrian would be if he went against Bray. Nah, Bray's a big deal, too. He ain't been in that ring. He's pedestrian. I, I would say it, pedestrian would be if it was Santos. He he wrestled. Yeah, that that would be. Yeah, absolutely. I was about to say Bray wrestles just as much as pedestrians at this point. Because <laughs> we'll, we'll get into that. It ain't, we'll get into that for sure. Um, I'm looking forward to it if it happens. It's the only. It's the logical. It's the logical continuation of Gunther's rise. Um. I think they've done everything right with him other than that one time they had him run away from Braun. So, I'm into it. I'm into it. NXT, NXT deadline was last weekend. Saturday, emanating from the PC for the last time, I guess, for some time, as they're going to do um, Vengeance Day in Charlotte, North Carolina, in February. Yeah. We broke that, we broke that here, right? We broke that Big here. Scoop. We could have broke it, but they didn't want us to. <laughs> right, right. They told us. <laughs> they told us specifically keep it to yourselves until we announce it. Um I came so around like, I came around on Iron Survivor very fast because it was like the War Games match, but everything mattered from the beginning. Like everything like absolutely mattered. And right. I Pinfalls thought the men's the and stuff. right. I thought the men's and women's Iron Survivor matches were I was taken aback because sometimes on NXT you don't see everything that they can do. Yeah. So you kind of ju- you kind of judge them off of that. I right. mean with the men with the men like I mean even with the men I mean Joe Gacy I didn't know he could do all that. They they, they don't do that weekly. So when I'm looking at Gacy I'm like what where the fuck has this been? I'm looking at Keanu James I'm like oh you can do that? I didn't know you could do all that. So there was just so much work being put in and it was just so hectic. I'm a fan of this concept. I'm a right. real fan of this concept because when we heard about it, it was like, it's bringing in so many elements of so many different matches. I don't know how this is going to work. But when you watch the match, it, it, it works because you have to have that frantic pace. You have to have the, the guys doing something different with the penalty box. That was a big story in that one. The other story was Roxanne. She didn't have a pen and just showed you the, the importance of having a pen and, and having being, you know, having that advantage. I, I, I thought to me, it was a arousing success for those two matches for deadline. I am still, I'm not completely sold, but I'll say that Grayson Waller did a large part to sell me on it. And, I low-key think it's his reality TV competition series experience (laughs) that got in the brain of that because I think, to me, it reminded me a lot of the actual challenge itself. And yes, I bring the challenge into every part of my daily life. Um, But it reminded me a lot of that in having to kind of do what you need to do to win in, in a competition. That's what it felt more than an actual match itself. It felt like a competition. Um, and I think he brought that element once he snuck those pins and got past those things and really did the best to kind of like keep himself in the lead. I think that's what you need to do. And that's how you kind of need to play it. Um, I thought the ladies kind of played it a little bit more as a match and the men's, it was like more firmer. This was a competition and you need to steal a victory wherever you can. It, it was. Shout out Joe Gacy. Shout out JD McDonough. Shout out um, Roxanne, who's amazing. Shout out Zoe Stark, too, because, again, like I know a lot of people talk about her character and stuff like that, but you really start to see that she is kind of the glue that holds a lot of this together, just being someone who is just adept. At being in that ring. And I I know I saw, I was like, this is why they have her in those positions. This is why they have her teaching in the Kita. This is why they have her working with so many people, because she is a general out there. And she was really maneuvering and, and making sure things happened in that women's match. So she, so she was the MVP for me in that match because she was she was making shit happen. She was out there first and all the way up to the end. I agree. Um, other things on this. New Day versus Pretty Deadly. I'm, I, 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 I've seen enough. I've seen enough, Mills. Why the fuck is Pretty Deadly um, down there? <laughs> Why are they? Being- 
Because somebody got to be. I mean, you could ask that for a lot of people that's still down there. I think we're waiting for this big show and we're waiting for this era shift. And we're waiting for them to put this big team over um, the next generation of like who's going to actually carry the 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 the, um, the division. But they are main roster ready for sure. Like they are they're clearly main roster ready. And I think even in a loss to New Day, which I think if I had to do predictions for that show, I would have picked New Day to win as well. I thought it was just an easy feel good moment, but also. Um, you give uh, whoever beats, pretty whoever beats deadly, the stars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you give them pretty much a chance to come back and tr- prove that they're not only just pretty deadly, but they're pretty resilient as well, um, and maybe pretty annoying. Um, and New Day is a great play off of that. So I thought that you know that was fantastic. Tommaso Ciampa tweeted that it was his favorite match of the weekend. And I agree. It definitely was. I mean, it felt house show, but also felt competitive. If that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm just such a big fan of pretty deadly. I think they got it. I really think they got it. And some of like, there's some segments that I feel like didn't don't work in a small room. They did a Christmas segment when the new day came out a week and a half ago. And I was like, it's not hitting in full cell, but I, that would have hit. In a big room, because that's a big room act. They're a big room act. They're taller than everybody on the show. Like, just, just they're perfect shit heels to have these types of matches with. And again, the work rate on this show, high as hell. Um, you also had uh, Kale, oh, no, she's not Kale anymore, but um, um, Alba Fire versus uh, what's her name? Il- Ilya Don. Ilya Don. I thought Ilya looked better here than she looked a lot of times in, in NXT UK. Um, obviously, Alba had to lose here as it's the beginning of the feud. You don't want to beat the new heel down so quickly, but people are are, are not into the spooky stuff. <laughs> I, I will say also, her spooky shit here is not as bad as it was in NXT UK. It was it was downright crazy at NXT UK. This was this was I thought this worked. It had a it had a purpose in the match. Um I didn't mind it at all here. No, nah, I think you got to go. I think in this era, especially now, like you got to tone back to spooky. Like it, it don't work the same as it does. As it did not, back then. Not if you have a whole show of spooky shit. I think, I think mm. keeping it, keeping it to where they have it now worked for me as well as them taking it away from schism. If schism still had spooky shit, I'd be like, okay, there's too, it's, it, what are we doing here? There's too much. It's too much spooktacular shit on the show. But with Ilya, right. uh, or Isla, Dawn, I thought it was it was perfectly okay here as long as they watch themselves. You know what I'm saying? You still got to get over the fact that she can wrestle. You know? And I just hope that they they, they watch out for that more 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 closely. Um, probably the weakest match on the show, though. Um, main event, Ron Breaker versus Apollo Crews. I had a sinking feeling he was going to win, but then that is Apollo. But um, I don't know how I feel about Braun winning here. I don't know. What, what do you think? I didn't think that Apollo should win at all, but <laughs> I feel well, like... Here's, here's my thing. I felt like if, if Grayson was going to win, the more interesting match would have been Grayson, or Grayson and Apollo for the title at this point. And, and then you get the, the title onto a, a Grayson later next year. But what, I, what it looks like with me with Braun is that they're, they are prolonging the mellow thing because I guess they yeah. feel like they don't, need a, they don't need a long build for those two. Because if you notice, he's basically beaten everyone he's been in that War Games match with but except those two at this point. I think that mellow thing, if Braun was going to get called up after Mania, the mellow thing would have started already. Right. Um so I feel like we're looking for a summer thing for Braun and especially Braun and Mello next summer for sure. And also Braun needs to, he need, do you turn him heel? Does he need to no. get one of those under his belt? Nah, not right now. No. Cause it would underscore what Mello's doing. And I feel like if you're really like trying to clear the way for Mello to be a very big heel on the roster, like if, if they turn Mello face, then I understand um but even that takes kind of time to like develop and get people used to but i would say no like keep him keep him where he's at for now right 
Uh, and that was the show. I thought it was really good. I, th- I think it's, it was the best NXT live event they did all year, to be honest with you. I, th- I thought it was it was great. I mean, Worlds Collide had moments. It had the main event. But I think as a show from start to finish, like I was thoroughly entertained the whole time with Deadline. So shout out to them. They're, they're working over there. And, and, and as Ricochet said, like the work rate's still there. The, 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 the heat is still over there. So like it, it's definitely a brand that we need to continue to, to watch and try and support. Absolutely. Um, let's move on to SmackDown. Kurt Angle's birthday drew record ratings. 2.3 million people watch the show with no Roman. Hey, Shout out to Kurt. <laughs> with draw, no, a true draw. No Roman Reigns. But um, it felt how showy at the end. But you know what? I, I talked it up with, to, it, to it being like, okay, not every show needs to end with some slobber knocker match or Roman Reigns talking for 15 minutes and having a brawl at the end. Like, I got the end segment. My real issue was that Gable Stevenson, it doesn't seem like he's learned or is learning anything as far as hey, just on screen presence. He just vibing right now. <laughs> he he I, just he walked up and it felt like he was he was acting. Like it didn't feel like he was yeah. like trying to <laughs> I I don't know what, what this kid's gonna be. Hey man, he had a different PC. <laughs> he's at that other one. Um <laughs> I so don't know what he's gonna be. It, 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 it just feels like he's vibing. It doesn't even feel like he's an actual. I feel like he's back to being like a featured person that they can bring in and have a relationship with. I don't think he's an actual like. It doesn't feel like he's contracted to the WWE anymore. That's just kind of the vibe I was getting, to be honest with you. I mean, he absolutely is. If they could get him to come to SmackDown on a random December in Pittsburgh, and to sell Kurt Angle, gotta come to Kurt. So strange. But um, the Usos defeat Sheamus and Butch to retain the tag team titles in the opener, with like a four-segment match. Uh, Jay Uso tells Sami Zayn, get get right, bro, because Roman's coming back next week. Cut your beard, because it's going to be a big night. What since do we think is going to happen? I don't know. I'm like, since when does Roman care how he looks? <laughs> well, Sami going to be having um, an edge up, so, I mean, it's kind of rough. You think he's cutting the hair? No, he's not going to do that. Okay. I think um, the turn isn't coming now. I think nah. if they it's another, like, it. I feel like they tease it. If it's another, like, let's joke, let's have fun, let's let's have a comedy angle. Miss me with it. Like, I don't want it. Roman don't do comedy. Roman do well, Roman. He's out there doing stand up every time he's there. Stop it. <laughs> Roman don't do comedy. He just does Roman, baby. You're crazy. Um, I, I don't know what to expect here. I don't think the turn's coming. I think Kevin Owens will be involved in some way, shape, or form. I think the match will probably be set up, though. But it seemed to me, like, even on Raw, that it's going for KO Solo, not KO Roman. Or or someone someone in, in Roman's orbit will get KO, but not Roman himself. Like, Roman doesn't, as of this moment, have a match for, for Royal Rumble. So it's either going to be KO or Sheamus. Or both. Hmm. Could be. Could be. I don't know. It's, it's, it's weird. But, I mean, the Sami Zayn thing, I'm intrigued, if only because, like, we want to see, like, what happens. But, you know, I won't be watching live. So, give me a, give me a wink or, like, a, or, like, a, the, 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 you know, the Wakanda hands thing, if it's good or not. God bless. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was saying. More- Liv Morgan and Tegan Knox are now a tag team and they're gunning for the tag team championships, but also have a bone to pick with Ronda Rousey and Shayna Baszler. I, I mean, week two, I got nothing to complain about with these two. I, I, and I thought Tegan looked good out there. She looked very smooth and crisp. Hey, man, a choice. No knees braces. A very strong choice, but a statement nonetheless. She my heard. Knees, my knees are Quan. fine. She heard Quan. She heard Quan. That's all she heard. She said, let me show this. Like let me my show knees this. Are fine. Let me show this black boy what I'm all about. I got I got I got tattoos on my knees. She probably I don't know whatever. But it was good. She got a good look too. I like her new yeah, look. They have a good look. I like her new look too. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, also on the show, <sighs> La Knight comes out, cuts a promo. Yeah. Listen, my issue <clears throat> with a lot of this is not on La Knight. It is not his fault. I was initially. I was initially happy as a hog and shit when he came out 
to 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 challenge Bray, not challenge Bray, but to fuck with Bray. I thought we would have had the match by now, you know. Nothing on LA Knight's part. He's doing his part. He's selling this angle, the way that only he knows how to. And I and I hope that it, it works out for him. Bray, it's been two months. Two months. I don't know what's going on. I feel like you got to have a Reddit to actually like tap into what I'm not spending my time on this no more than I did for the teasers, right? Mm -mm. When do we get in this match? Uh, I'm tired of the other of the, of the, the the mysteries. I don't want to say rumble, New Year's? but you kind of got to say rumble. <laughs> I feel like rumble. <laughs> you could have the 23rd or the 30th to do this before the end of the year. Hey, that another be part. Right another part of it is is Bray healthy? Is another question that I have. Is like, is he actually able to get in ring? Feels like he should have been in the ring by now. Because they they hired a bunch of like meals. There's a bunch of dudes. That's not him wearing those masks. That's like another oh, really? person. Yes, they hired a whole another group for him. Huh. Okay. It's uh. Hold on. Let me let me let me look it up under on Robert Stone. Robert. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not him. It's um. They hired. It's it's a group that was from TNA. Ugh. Um, I didn't mean to say that out loud. Um, <laughs> it's another guy. I can't. I can't find it. it. Was it was it was a bunch of people? Somebody can on the Discord will correct me. But it was it was it was it was this group that used to be and TNA that I believe that they 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 signed just for this. Huh. He had some nerve. Um, <laughs> bringing all these people to do nothing and get paid every week. That's how you get fired. Just crazy. Um, that's how you get fired. <laughs> Don't let Nick Khan find that out. Nick Khan will find a way. He crunching numbers. Don't worry. You go crunching numbers in April. He's like, listen, man. <laughs> Just put them all under one mask. <laughs> also, I, also, I, I believe Bo is back too. Boa. Ooh. Bo. Wait. Bo Dallas. Bo. Yeah. Oh, Bo Dallas. I don't know why he yes. said Boa. Um, There's been a lot of rumors around people that have been signed just for this angle. What are, what are they doing? Looks like we'll have to wait to find out. <laughs> so we have the notes here. It was a fiend, but it was actually Uncle Howdy. Oh, right, right, right. I'm sorry. I don't know if we're going to see the fiend anymore. I feel like that was nah, still nah, close. Dead. It was still close to me. Um, it's on clearance. You might yeah. still go get Fiend shirts, but you, it might be like $9, $8. Biggest announcement, though, is that John Cena will be on the final SmackDown of the year on December 30th. I, I would like to think that's probably going to be a live episode. Um, Because I don't know. They're not doing, they're not going live on the 23rd, huh? You think? I don't think so. But also, why would John Cena, what does John Cena have planned for New Year's? All he work. I mean, being in every every fucking commercial that I watch on TV, I don't know. I would imagine this is going to set up something for the new year. We've already talked about how Stone Cold has has wanted either him or AJ or somebody else on the roster for his next match at, at uh, WrestleMania. I think it should be Cena, but um, we'll have to see. I mean, there's no there's no awesome theory on this show. Who could it be? Could it be Gunther? Could it be? <clears throat> um, Roman coming back out? I don't know. Who, who knows? I don't know. We'll see. Maybe he announces himself with a Royal Rumble. Who knows? That would be crazy. I would love it. That would, would be crazy. He's going to be... If the, and, if, and if The Rock returns to the Royal Rumble? Man, come on now. He's going to be on the ground. He's going to be on the ground for 45% of that match. Just resting. Um, Monday Night Raw... Long show from Milwaukee. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> good matches, that though. Show was long. Good it was good matches, but that show was long, bro. Long in the tooth. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? A little long in the tooth. Uh, very heavy on, very heavy on gifts giving. <laughs> um, I don't know. If Alexa, I, I don't know if I kick off a show with Alexa Bliss ever again. I don't know. <laughs> Why? 
I feel like the match was just, it wasn't to me like a hot opener. I think the hottest part of the opener was Becky Lynch coming down and kicking some ass. But other than that, like, it just, it it's not that. Disappear, disappear for the rest of the show. <laughs> <laughs> she might have been back. <laughs> she might have been back home. She, she was taking care of the baby, bro. She's like, I, I, all right, I'm formula going. and shit. Yeah. Meet me at the um, hotel. That's what she told Seth, who had to wait till the end of the show to leave. But, but I connect the Bray thing to this because Alexa wins number one contendership, which is what we thought. So the Bianca Becky mm-hmm. thing is done as we, or Bianca Bailey thing is done as we had predicted. Mm-hmm. The Bray logo shows up. She puts Bianca down for the, um, the little uh, sister Abigail, and then she stops out of it. What are we doing? <laughs> Long term drawing storyline kooky shit. Spooky. We're back to spooky, bro. Between two these shows is too much. Who, these are the people who invented spooky. The spooky shit that we don't like to see that much. <sighs> so we have Alexa <clears throat> versus Bianca. Who who knows when? This uh KP keeps saying down the line. Uh Miz and Dexter and Loomis will have a ladder match, which should be fun, admittedly, but I felt that this segment was a little too long. Johnny Gargano could cannot cover segments like that. I, I think he's still very used to little room. He needs to get used to big this room. Was, yeah, to me, this was so stupid. I don't know. <laughs> like, I just felt like this was stupid. Why is like, he in that role? It was weird. Yeah. Why is Miz being harassed by these two people? Also, so, like, okay, that's, that's that you're doing stand up right now. No, so <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not doing stand up. This is this is real. He's being harassed. Okay. Why hasn't Gargano got his win back against Miz yet? Um, just odd. I don't know. Where the, yeah, what are they doing? And I got a sinking suspicion that Johnny Gargano is going to be the longest part, the, the person that has the longest time in Royal Rumble. Don't quote me on that, but I got the sinking suspicion that they're gonna they're gonna do that this year. Man, forty minutes or, or more, your pizza's free. <laughs> Uh, Oscar versus Rhea Ripley had a banger, which the crowd was largely sitting on their hands for, which which sucked. <laughs> but um, I thought they went crazy, bro. It, it was a long it, show. It was, I mean, but I thought that as, as a match, as me just rating the match, it was it was to me their best match that they've had. I, I thought it was really really good. And Dom was was perfect taking the mist. Oscar hints that she's going to do a new era. She's going on a break after this. She's taking a lot of L's. So if they're going to reinvent her, it's about time to do that for Oscar. Um, very women don't heavy spooky. show. Don't spooky, don't spooky me. No, I just need don't violence. Back. I just need yeah, violence. There we go. That's what we need. Um, Candice LeRae and Ayo Sky, of course, they have the greatest chemistry. I think of, of most women on that roster. They had a banger on Raw, um, giving Ayo Sky some more momentum for their Friday's match against uh Liv and Tegan Knox. They need to find like a good mid card feud for Candice LeRae because she can go, and I think people know that she can go. And she, you know, what's funny, Meals. Every match she's had so far, she they end up like being silent, but by the end they're they're she's over. Like they end up cheering for her. Like she I agree. She, she needs she needs something. Cause the gimmick of being a white woman is not <laughs> <laughs> a, a, a friendly white your friendly next door white woman is not a it's it's not a solid gimmick. Like this right. is not an affable, affable character on the show is not enough <laughs> to carry this thing. She shows you know up, she gives Johnny Gargano advice, she leaves and goes do her matches. This is a working woman, a working you know mother. Is that her gimmick? You know what I think? Team her with Becky. It's natural. Mm. They're both mothers. Um, and that's not the reason. That's not the, and, and, hold, I don't want to say that. That's strange. not the reason. That's not the reason why they should, but I think that it's like a, a really cool kind of thing to say, hey, like we both came back from this and we're both kicking ass. Like, and 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 they're both over. Like I think Candace has gotten a lot, a lot of support since she's come back, and and I think it's really cool to see. Uh, finally, main event: Seth Rollins versus Bobby Lashley. Uh, again, it was the end of the night, but they actually got behind this a little bit toward the end because Seth was out there. Seth seems to be a babyface this week, so I guess that's cool. Uh, <laughs> hey, I'm not even going to question it. I'm not questioning it anymore. Uh, he's just a babyface in certain cities. Um, he beats Lashley. He becomes the number one contender with with the with some type of pedigree. Lashley popped right back up after it, but um, <laughs> hey, he's being clean as a whistle though. Clean as a damn whistle. 
they're building they're building Seth up for something. And they're also building AJ up for something. Let's be clear. They just kind of swept the Judgment Day versus the club under the rug. Like that has just been over. AJ's being set up for something really, really, really. He's been getting a lot of wins. Can we talk about the Judgment Day and Finn's hat? <laughs> His Jimbo Jones ass hat. <laughs> Finn is a funny dude because I know he had that hat on just because. Just just, yeah, just to like just pop because, himself. Just because that Jimbo Jones ass hat. Is it purple? Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's Yo, exactly what happened. Watching his little character things are like some of the best moments of the show to me. Um, I think pitting them against Street Profits is perfect. They needed a good foil. They wrestled everyone. Yeah. They haven't done this. Because they're clearly not spooky anymore. They're just like dickhole. <laughs> um, they're bullies. Yeah, bullies. <laughs> That's what they are. Uh, very Jimbo Jones, Nelson Muntz-esque things. And they brought a bad influence to Dominic under the fold. And I fuck with it. I, I really fuck with it. But I, I'd say pay attention to Seth in the next coming weeks and pay attention to AJ Styles because there's gonna be a there's gonna be a shift coming coming imminently with those two with the, with the way they've been positioned. They're they're heating AJ back up after he's taken so many L's this year. And Seth, I mean, he can't lose at this point. I mean, he'll probably lose against Austin, but he can't lose at this point. Um, in terms of of, of what's going on, and uh, that's what happened this week. I want to. Update you guys. Wait, 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 wait. You forgot. Lashley got fired at the end of the Raw. Oh, shit. I forgot about that. <laughs> he got whole fired. I was I was at the end of Raw, and I tweeted out, this is such a December-ass Raw. Um, and I was like, something needs to happen. And then Lashley randomly gets fired. And I was like, you know what? It's not, not random. It's not random. He absolutely attacked several uh, people who work there. He made Adam Pierce cuss on last national television. Um, it's apparently enough is enough. We might have to get Adam Pierce on the show. We're getting Brock back. Let's just be clear. You're getting Brock back. You're Brock are they back. Gonna make this, are you going to make this man back for his job? Is that what we're going to do to Bobby? Oh, Lashley? he's going to. He's going to violence himself back in. Mm. Violence himself back in. But, I mean, it, it, they're, they're at least doing something with him away from a title. Because he doesn't need a title right now. Um. So, yeah. That was the show. No, that's the show. I think we have to update. We're gonna Are we going to start year end next week? Yes, we are. I so have to make nothing special. else matters. <laughs> I have to make the spreadsheet. So we're going to be doing our year end uh, year review next week, starting with, I don't know what categories. We, it looks like I know what I'm doing this just weekend. Random, just, yeah, just random <laughs> shit. Come on, man. We just but, uh, the, next, stuff. the next two weeks of episodes, that means on the 21st and the 28th, are going to be our year end episodes. And the 28th is going to be our final A show for the year. If anything big happens, obviously we're going to talk about it, but a lot of our show is going to be, um, dedicated to our year end. Love people love our year end shows, and we love to do them. We just gotta gotta actually fill out this list. So let me pull up 2021's list, and uh, I'll make 2022's list, and we're we're gonna get to it. So thank you guys for listening. Special thanks to Ricochet for being on the show. Watch him uh, in his rematch against Gunther this Friday, eight o'clock on Fox. Uh, and yeah, thank you for listening to the A Show. For uh, until next week for meals, I'm Justin, and we'll see you guys later.